Hello again everybody and welcome back to Fujit Blitz and today we're going to look at a subject that a lot of people hate. Camping! Is it really the ultimate sin in Blitz? Now a lot of people get upset with so-called campers. Why are you camping? Camp harder? Blah 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 blah. And it's one of the main bug bearers in the game and it offends and annoys and frustrates a lot of people when they see tanks camping however what you need to understand is camping firstly can be a very useful tactic and secondly some tanks are expected to camp and you have to understand this guys so what we're going to look at here is is there a right time to camp I'm not just going to show you videos of people camping. I'm going to show you where camping can be used as a tactic. And I'm also going to show you videos whereby camping should not be encouraged. So this is me rolling out in a Conway on Naval Frontier. As you can see there, I'm a middle order tank. It's effectively a tier 10 game. The Conway is in real terms a TD. Although it doesn't really act like a TD, it, it acts like a medium. It has got thin armor, guys. It's got a great gun with a long reload and a lot of derp. It is a tank that can be punished. So, when you're in a Conway, you have to consider what is your aim of being in a Conway. And the aim of you being in a Conway and the role that tank has to play is to use the gun to maximum effect now if i were to stick my nose out here and confront all those big tanks i'm gonna get pasted they are gonna plow me full of shots now i admit i've only done 500 odd damage so far and as you can see we've already lost two tanks and they've only lost one tank and you could say oh you're just a dirty camper the idea of the game is to keep more guns on the battlefield and if those guns happen to be big guns guys and they can be effective then that's what you need to do to win the idea funnily enough of the game is to win the game it's not always about masteries in you know getting seven kills it's about winning the game that's the idea of the game so now i've only done 1.8 damage there's three against four and I haven't really moved from this position, and I'm not going to move from this position until necessary. So I've been effectively camping. I haven't actually pushed. Why would I push? I'm in a tank that cannot push. Not only that, those two tanks down there, the 183 and the 263, can really put me into a world of pain. I mean, the 183 can effectively one-shot me to high heaven almost, especially if he ammo racks me with his uh, hesh. So you've got to remember there is a time and a place for camping and I've camped virtually the whole of this game. Now it's two against two and I am in no rush to get down there for two reasons. One, I've still got over four minutes left of this battle. Why do I need to rush? I've got time allocated to me. I can see the E50 over there. He's looking worse for wear. He's a good player. I know him from one UK. I get a lucky shot there, to be honest with you, but I'm still camping. I haven't moved from this position. I've done 2,900 odd damage. I've only taken one kill, but at this moment in time, we have been effective on the battlefield. And this is the thing you need to remember. I mean, you can argue and argue and argue that I've been a dirty camper, but I've managed to get shots in. I've done shots and I've done exactly what the tank is designed to do. I've still got all my hit points and I need to save those hit points because at some point in time, probably when we get to around the two and a half minute mark, I need to push because, well, we need to win the game. There are two of them still out there. Both of them are TDs. Both of them are big TDs. And this is where the strategy of the game starts kicking in. So here we go, we're at the three minute mark. 
and I'm now going to try and see them. I now need to make a move. I've saved all my hit points for this part of the game. If I would have rushed in, I'd be dead. And the chances of me doing what I'm about to do would be greatly reduced. And this is what you need to remember with camping. Don't just shout out people are camping. Because sometimes they're camping for a reason. But I'll get to some other instances. In this game, it made sense for me to camp. And now, as I said, I'm going to get to the two minute mark. And I'm definitely now going to push. Because I've got two minutes to win this game. I now know they're on the base. The way the base is capping, I think both of them are on the base. Because it's capping very quickly. They've showed their hand, not me. This allows me to now get round the flank to try and put shots in. And guys, this is how you should be playing. You you should be looking for these type of opportunities. So you need to understand when it's okay to camp, but you also need to understand when you need to push. There's no point you camping for the entire game and saving all your hit points unless you're going to use them. The hit points are there for a reason. I am now going to use those hit points. Uh, this is a really bad shot. I hit the ground. That was my fault. I tried to snap it. The E50 distracts them, which is nice. They want to take the E50 out because he's an easier kill. That allows me to get a shot into the 263. He's now gone. I leave, oh, the, the E50 is now gone. I know the 183 is now on a very long reload. I'm going to load the Hesh. And here we go. Oh, it's a low roll. It's so annoying. But it's one on one. I've still got all my hit points. Unless he gets an ammo rack, I know he cannot destroy me with one shot. He's got to ammo rack me to waste me in one go, which gives me the advantage. I stick another very low roll into him, which is very, very annoying indeed. But I bounce him, which was very, very lucky from my point. I now get to go around the corner because he's on a 20 second reload and we've won this game. Simple fact. 4,238 damage. We bounce 930. We took three kills. We win the game. Okay, I only get a second class, but that's not the point. That is an example of effective camping. Now, whilst it's expected that most TDs will camp because they have paper thin armor, you have to understand your tank. Here I am rolling out this time in a different type of TD. The T-30, the American TD, which is, <laughs> in fairness, the turret armor on this thing is a beast. There is no reason for me to camp, not with this turret armor and not with these hit points. It allows me to push to an extent. I am trying to get these tanks spotted up, knowing that it is going to be difficult for them to pen my turret. And it will be difficult for them to pen my turret. If I would have camped in this thing, then I would be quite ineffective, to be honest with you. And this is a nice ammo rack. Goodbye. <laughs> I mean, okay, I got lucky there. But th don't forget, this thing's got a big gun on it. And as I said, the idea of this game is to keep the big guns on the battlefield. The more guns you have on the battlefield, the more chance you've got of winning. So if I would have camped, I wouldn't be able to do this. And this is what you need to understand. The game is strategic. There is no point just camping for the sake of camping. If you were in a tank like this, albeit a TD, why stick it at the back? I mean, use the gun. It has a great gun and great turret armor for a reason. Use that armor, guys and use those hit points when necessary. The IS-8 is pushed. That is a big mistake by the IS-8. He thought I was an easy kill, but I'm not an easy kill. I'm in a T-30. Okay, I've lost half my hit points, but now he's going to be deleted. It's as simple as that. And that was, that was an unnecessary push from the IS-8. This allows me to effectively put some hurt on them. Ah, uh, the, uh, the Yag Panther 2 gets a shot in, but then he gets wasted by my toon mate. If I would have camped in the normal spot, which is by the rocks, these opportunities to win this game and make these pushes 
would not have presented. We are now six against one. I'm a one shot to that VK, but it doesn't matter. The game is in the bag. Even if I can just take some of his hit points away, like I do there, it doesn't matter if he kills me, we won the game. So you need to understand when to camp, what tanks to camp in, and why you're camping. Now, this is a subscriber replay in a flat panzer, and this is an example of when camping really pays off as a tactic. And this is Nov Lucas 6. He is in the Flat Panzer here in Castilla. And as you can see, he's already found his nice little camping spot, which I don't think is the spot he wanted initially. I think he wanted to go a bit higher, but the targets are presenting, which has allowed him to basically farm. He is doing exactly what the TD is designed to do. And that is sit at the back and smack targets. Now. That is not the rule for all TDs, by the way. As we've just seen, the T-30 is not a tank realistically designed to sit at the back. The, the Flat Panzer, however, is a different kettle of fish. It's got a very low profile for a reason. And that low profile is there to make it difficult to spot. So to sit here in an elevated position while all the tanks on the enemy team are presenting down there makes perfect sense to me. Now you could accuse Nova Lucas of being a dirty camper and a lot of you probably will. He's already done 811. Um, he's got tanks presenting, he's already taken one kill, hello, take you out, oh no, doesn't take him out but he's got a great reload so the chances of that AMX 12T lasting this, uh, this push is very very greatly reduced. And there it goes. Now we've got the Type. Oh, and the Type 34 is not going to get. He's not going to be interested. He's more interested in the KB2. Unfortunately, the KB2 smacks him, which really does hurt. But the KB2 then decides that he's not going to give any interest anymore. He's not going to sort of get himself out of position. And he's allowing the little flat panzer to smack him. We've now done 1,670 damage. He hasn't moved from this spot. Why should he? He is being able to farm. He's letting the enemy push him. He's doing what a TD of this type is meant to do, and that is give support fire and farm damage. He's now done 1,875 damage. He has taken two kills. The ARL is not going to be much longer for this game. As you can see, smack, smack. He's getting smacked, however, from the left there. He's going to have to consider moving because, well, he does, but only to just get out of the way of the, uh, the Type 34 hitting him. He's now done 2,600 damage. He's taken kill number three. Two tanks on the enemy team left against three on the green team. The Type 34 isn't going to last much longer. He's effectively a one and a half shot, maybe a one shot. Yeah, he's a one shot. There you go. So now there's only one tank left and it's the other side's flat panzer. You could argue that that was an ineffective use of camping. I would totally disagree. That was an incredibly effective use of camping. He's done almost 3000 damage, guys. He's taken four kills. He has been instrumental in putting his team in a favorable position to win this game. There are three against one. It's only their flat pans are left. He is in a world of trouble. Nov Lucas obviously wants this kill because if he does so, the chances of getting his mastery are greatly increased. Hello, Flatty. Oh, nice roll into the engine deck. One more shot. Kill number five. 3,270 damage. Five kills and a well-deserved mastery because he used camping in the right way. Now this is me rolling out in exactly the same tank but this time on a completely different map. This time we're on Normandy. So I'm going to go to the normal TD spot and I'm going to sit here and wait for them to present. Hello, smack you. Now I've got two choices. I can sit here and farm like you've just seen Nov Lucas do. Which is tempting. Or because I'm not elevated and Normandy is a different type of map with all these undulating lumps and bumps. It's an undulating map. 
and it's very difficult to sit at the back and just farm. So I need to now push and hopefully whittle down some of these one shots in low hit point tanks. Now I've got a low profile, so this gives me an advantage again. I've got two big tanks here, I've got the Chrysler, sorry not Chrysler, I've got the KV-2, can we smack him? Yes we can, we can whittle him down, that's nice. Um, can we whittle him down again? Hopefully we can, we can get him out of the game because he's a big tank, yes he's gone. Now I've got the Churchill, who's a one shot, anybody can kill the Churchill, he's so I can roll up behind him, stick him on the flank, smack, oh, don't do anything, let's get a bit closer, I've got, uh, stick it, oh, yeah, there we go, so, we've taken one kill, we've done 700 damage, and now we're frontlining, and there's a reason why we're frontlining, we're frontlining because the situation called for us to frontline, we're in a good situation. So we've only done 700 damage, we've taken two kills, there is one tank left. If I would have sat at the back on this game, like Nova Lucas did in the last game, I would have been totally ineffective. I would have basically deprived my team of a gun. You have got to understand the mechanics of the game. You've got to know when to push, when to sit, when to camp. And uh, basically, you need to understand these tactics, guys. So... I don't always say that you should be camping. I only did 774 damage, nowhere near the, 4, 000, the, the 3k that Nova Lucas did in the last game. I only get a third class, but it wasn't about showing you how great I am. It's about showing you when and when not to camp. Now, here I am in the Object 252U, the, some would say, OP Russian Premium Heavy. Now, this is going to be a contentious and controversial clip because... I'm in a heavy. Now, I'm in a slow heavy, guys, and I'm on a side of the map where the enemy aren't. So I could, I've could i got two choices here. I can sit here and I can camp and I can potentially farm damage, or I can roll over there and take an eternity and take my gun out of the game and basically put my team in a bad position. So I'm gonna sit here and I'm gonna farm. Now you may think, that is a poor decision, but I am going to be able to get shots in. I'm going to be able to whittle these tanks down, which is the idea of me. I'm a heavy. Okay, I'm not frontlining here. I'm camping. But I was faced with a choice. The entire red team, guys, is over there. They're not over here. It's going to take me time to get there. By the time I get there, my team would have been whittled down, and they will not have the benefit of my gun. That is straightforward, and these are the decisions you need to make. You could all sit there and shout, camper, camper, camper. I've only done 400 damage, I admit that, but I've been getting shots in. And I, I'll guarantee you, I've been more effective sat here than I would have been trying to get over there to take the tanks out. It's now five against four. We are actually in a good position here. We know where they are and we're doing okay and i've taken a kill i've done 1100 damage not much in this thing it's now three against five there is no longer any point for me to camp i know the three are over there i'm not going to get shots on them for that position i've got all my hit points left and like the first game you need to know when to push and this time i need to push i've saved my hit points up for this part of the game yet again there are three tanks we are now down on a three against four. Here comes the T-54 lightweight. I can smack him. Yes, I can. There we go. He is now my priority. I don't want him being able to run around the battlefield and get behind us. So I am going to do everything I can to get him out of the game. If that means I lose hit points, I don't care. I've got a lot of hit points to lose. I've got a lot more hit points than he has. He's going to hurt me. There's no question of that. Oh. But he's got he's been taken out by the ISU. Now we've got the IS6. Oh, that shot was just dreadful. He's the last tank in the game. Oh, you can scream and shout that I've been totally ineffective by camping in this game. Well, sorry guys, I disagree. I've actually been quite effective in this game, as you'll see in the end results. We wanted to win the game. We've won the game. Simple. Not the best use of a heavy. I agree. But we did just shy of 2,000 damage. We took three kills. 
and we help win the game. Don't get me wrong, I am not saying you should always camp far from it. There are instances, however, where tactically, like we saw in the last game, it makes sense to camp. However, I would not recommend that you go out and start camping in all your heavies and use the excuse that, well, Fujit says it's going to take me too long to get to the battle, because that's not what I'm saying at all. In that game, it made sense for me to camp to make my gun effective. TDs in certain instances are expected to camp, same as some other tanks. However, it's a judgment call, guys, and you need to understand the game to make that call. It's about decision making. I hope this video has been slightly useful. It hasn't tackled the issue of dirty rotten campers. It's tackled the issue of, is there a right time to camp and is there a wrong time to camp? I'm not saying I'm right. I'm not saying those tips are cast in stone. They're not. Anyway, I've been Fujit. By all means, send me your replays to fujitsblitz at gmail.com or join my Discord server. You can also follow me on numerous social media platforms. If you haven't pressed subscribe yet, please do. It's a nice thing to do. It costs you nothing. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield, and happy tanking. Because, you know, that's what it's all about, having fun and being happy.